I tend to find either big influencers that would just be hundred dollars up or um, just like random people who don't have a following, but do that. I don't know. Is there any techniques you use to like maybe relatively efficiently find people like that? Um, well, there's, there's definitely influencers who are willing to take $50, but it takes a lot of outreach to find them. Um, there's kind of, I would say a sweet spot, like, you know, if they have under 300,000 followers and let's say they're averaging above 50,000 views per video, then I would feel comfortable like out the gate offering them $50 because, you know, if let's say they have like over a million dollars and they're averaging the followers, yeah. 100,000 views, then you might offend them by offering that amount, you know? Yeah. So stick, stick to pe the people with less followers, but really high engagement per video. Um, so, you know, just go through your For You page, go through people's uh, accounts. If they have like less than 500,000 followers and they're averaging 50, 000, 50 to 100,000 views, then like stick to that. I would say if they have over a million followers then like don't waste your time because they're probably not gonna accept 50 bucks. They might, but it's, it's rare. Um, but oh, yeah. focus more, yeah, on the average views with lower followers. Okay, that makes sense. So you're saying that, you know, the people with the lower followers, even if they have the same engagement there, they probably have had less experience like dealing with offers and things like that. So they're not going to be as have high as high expectations for what they want to get paid. Exactly. Yeah. Because like if they're, let's say, recently blowing up or recently going viral and like their TikTok followers are just starting to go up, they mm -hmm. haven't been doing any of this business stuff probably as long as the people who have more followers, you know? So they're not too familiar with like negotiating rates and stuff versus someone who's been posting for a year. Um, so that's why I say like, go through your For You page and look for newer accounts who are recently popping off because you know they haven't been around as long, yeah. so. And the best way to find that you would say is like a For You page. For You page and then go to recently trending songs and then go to go to that specific sound, you know, and scroll through the videos and then scroll through each uh, video, just click over their accounts. So you see under like, I would say 400,000 followers with high engagement, reach out. Okay, that's helpful, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Like going through my feed, I, I see like a lot of cosplay stuff and I wanna see if I can tap into that market as far as like, cosplayer influence in marketing. I don't think that's been done that I've seen for artists within that, within that niche. How would you go about not necessarily contacting them, but like what type of campaign would you suggest? Or like if you were to think about going that route? Uh, I mean, I would... Honestly, the same way you contact any other influencer, just ask them what see what their promo rates are, see what they're they're ready is just to like do their thing with the song in the background and then kind of take okay. it. Um, yeah, honestly, honestly, no different than some of the stuff we talked about. Like, I, either just you know going in it with with kind of the mindset of like, yo, I just want them to do their thing to it and just get the audience to hear it, and you know, I'm really just going for mass brand awareness with no real expectations. Or hey, can you create something that I'll be able to reuse on a bunch of other promo spaces? There you go. It's always you're always kind of going about it one of those two ways, no matter the type, the influence or the niche. So I was like, yo, do I just want you to do your thing? Make some shit I can reuse. So um, right. usually rates vary depending on depending on what that is, right? Like one usually requires more work than the other, and they charge you accordingly. So that's why I say I would just approach it like like that, like hey. I've come across your work. I like it. You know, do you do music promotions? If so, what does that look like? What does that cost? And then go from there. So we've had campaigns before where we plan to do majority ads, and then there'd be such a big moment that was that was happening yep. where like, you have to oh, run with it. It makes sense to now go all influence. Like we got to take advantage of this. So right. So basically, if you see something kind of you know getting viral esque or some sort, you're like, oh, we we can't let this die because it once it's done, it's gone. Yeah, exactly. Compared to ads, you can turn off ads and then turn them back on anytime you want, and it'll do the same shit. Exactly, yes. exactly. Okay. Like you see a meme, you post a video, you're like, "Oh, this is working. Let's go." And like, 
that's usually why I like I personally like going super heavy on as in the beginning is it's, it's also a slower spend. So if you mm -hmm. if it happens, like you said, it's easy to just turn that ad off, rebudget that money, and then jump into what you got to do. Versus like influencer, like once you pay for the post, like that's it. You know what I'm saying? It's like that's it. Yeah. No. It's definitely, it's definitely like you said, it is way bigger of a risk because you can't, the data behind it compared to like ads, I can look at different campaigns I've ran. You get an idea of what your cost per conversion is. You're like, okay, if I spend, if I spend 400 bucks, I'm most likely going to get this around that typically. Right. So, you know, your lows and highs, your medians and things like that. But with, with these influencers, you, you kind of, you have like a idea, but it's, like the data is less trackable, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I know we had a campaign that we did around Valentine's Day where we just needed an influencer to do a Valentine's Day makeup look so we could get it posted on a bunch of pages, you know what I'm saying, and stuff. Yeah. And so like that one, I think like we ended up paying this girl maybe like 600, 650. And she only had maybe like 40,000 followers on TikTok, but she was, she was like, she could get the video done in a day. And like her videos were actually pretty dope, you know. We we're like, all right, we getting this shit shot out anyway. We don't need like the biggest creator to do it, you know. We just need somebody that could right. execute on this shit in such a short timeline. Um, so, and that's if we were looking at purely audience, I don't think she would have been worth it, you know. We're looking at, you know, she's ticking off three of these boxes, you know. Not only is she can she do the look, it's gonna look good, and she's the only one that's said they can get it done in the next twenty four hours. It's like, yo, here to get your money. You know? So yeah. we just trying, trying to go. Right. Especially in that particular scenario, it was something that like the artist asked for like super last minute. And we thought it was a cool idea that was worth like trying to execute on like super last minute. So, you know, like in, in, in that case, once again, it was, it was worth it. So that's just it's just it's just a, a bunch of different variables that go into doing the influence and stuff. But I just think ultimately like that's what you're thinking about. Like, am I am I paying in my mind, am I paying for brand awareness? If so, is it worth it to me on that front? Or am I paying for content to be created so I can execute on the further strategy? And is it worth it in that front to me? You know, if yes on either of those, go for it. If no on either of those, you know, don't do it. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna create a a spreadsheet, kind of like the influencer TikTok influencer spreadsheet that y'all had. I'm gonna make one of mine for for that type of stuff. Yeah, and and that type of stuff, man, is like how you start to build out like. The whole omnipresence thing we think about, right? Like, if I'm an anime fan, like, I'm seeing your music on these anime meme pages on Instagram and Twitter, and I log into TikTok, you know, since I'm probably liking anime shit, I'm probably seeing cosplay. I'm now hearing the music in that community, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the, and then I see your videos pop up on my channel, like, you talking about anime shit, you know, like, that's how you start to like be those touch points. And these touch points in, in a really natural looking way, you know what I'm saying? A really organic looking way. Like, and then, you no, know, you're getting the cosplay video. Posted on cosplay shout out pages on Instagram and on Twitter, and you know, it's, it's getting to that on Reddit and stuff. You know, like that's how you do it. You know, that's how you keep it, like keep that kind of going. And you know, of course, you, you scale up as far as your budget and just your bandwidth to reach out to people to take it. But like that's how you start to have like this really creative uh, campaign that's just geared around hitting a really specific niche. You're thinking about like that. What can I make for it? What can I get my stuff placed and then who can I reach out to that can help me create things that, that also stay in the space? A lot of times, especially like with, which you also have to keep in mind with super niche influences that they don't get hit up for music problems as much as you would think they do. You know, right. sometimes they'll just be willing to make it work because that's not going to get bad. Like, you know? So it's like, um, I mean, I can tell you how many like, hit us like, yo, I charge 500, but I fuck with it. So if you can do it, I do it for 350, 300. Like, right? it's like, they maybe get hit off a music problem a handful of times a month, you know? And then even that is how, about how many are quality to the point to where they want to do it, you know, and put that work in for it, so. Um, but I'm building that relationship too. So like maybe if the campaign goes well with one influencer, you can be like, okay, well, it worked good last time. I want to do five more posts. What can we, what can we work out as a deal, for a package deal, you know, since we, since we built that, relationship to up until this point yeah exactly 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 and then that's, that's that's how you're able to move on stuff because we, we have like we have go-to influences that when we're trying to execute certain campaigns really quickly or just get a, a baseline idea off the ground you know like you know this person because the views are going to be pretty good maybe not always the greatest but you know not always the worst like at least pretty good they're going to get the video out pretty fast so the client is happy to see stuff go out pretty fast. You know? And then for your point, you're, you're probably one the same thing, like speeding this, you know, uh, execution within a certain window. And then like having go-to influencers like that, 
really helps, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, because yeah. You're, you're trying to test an idea out. Like speed is a big benefactor. You want to know so you can pivot as fast as possible. Like what you see when working with new influencers is that they don't trust you as much as you probably don't trust them. You know, so yeah. the communication is very slow. Everyone's just, starting over. Yeah. The other person to finesse them. You know, somebody possibly does get finesse. It's, it's all. It's just always dealing with that. Um. So, I mean, I think like, like I think I've said it before, but that's what you should be aiming to build with your influencer list long-term anyways. Like how many go-to you have under your belt that you know like, okay, this time I only got four. So I know I can move on four pretty quickly. And it's gonna, you know, maybe it does take me three weeks to find enough influencers to do it the way I want to do it. But now you build these relationships and now you have eight solid influencers this time around. You have a team. Yeah, exactly, you build off in there. And then I mean, usually those communities are pretty small. Like when we did the Apollo Fresh campaign, um, one of my marketers was telling me to like literally like anime meme pages were reaching out and like yo, I heard you out here, you know, tossing the, <laughs> the background for sure. <laughs> oh shit. Look at my stats, here go what my engagement looks like, you know, like kind of selling us on them because like they're not used to getting music from yeah. that community. Um, so you know, that's another good way just to get tapped in. Like you 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 I, like we ask influencers all the time, like yo, do you have other influencer friends um, or pages that you would recommend we work out to, like anybody you refer to and, now they like you enough if they really do have somebody. They're like, yeah, man, you know, my boy runs a couple of music promo pages, or you know, my best friend, she has a hundred thousand followers on TikTok. She also gets this amount of views. And you know, it, it helps build a network out. And it's easier because you're all you're getting this referral from someone's other influencer trust, you know. So you get over a lot of those trust barriers a lot faster. Um, but yeah, hundred percent, man. You get like two or three people that really fuck with you in a particular niche, it becomes easier to build out because you can just ask them. And they're in that space working, so they know, like, oh, yeah, the, what are the other, yo, like, yo, who are some other dope cosplayers I should reach out to for promo? Oh, yeah, you ever heard of this one girl? You know, I can't even think of her name. You ever heard of her? Yeah, you can offer some kickback, too. Like, yo, this ends up working with this person you recommended, I'll throw you a dub, or, you know what I'm saying, or whatever the case may be, yeah. kickback. Man, influence is a, 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 a fuck with you, man. Like, that's why I said, like, TikTok is just, like, TikTok is universally, the cheapest because it's, it's so many people who like just got famous or just got their audience like yesterday, you know? Um, yeah. um, they they haven't properly gone through the like the stages of becoming an influencer yet. Like it hasn't like clicked in their minds yet. They're like, yo, this is a business. Right. You know, so, uh, it's, I mean, it's fucked up, but like, it's, it's just the truth. It's like, yeah, sometimes- It is what it is, man. You know, people, yeah. you know, they don't get it yet. You know? They're like, oh yeah, like, yo, okay, I got half a million followers, I get, like we once got an influencer that like I think we caught him the week he was going viral. And I remember he charged us like 150 for a post. And the day we reached out to him, asked him about doing the post. He had like a quarter million followers. By the time he asked me to post it, he was like, hey, no, man, you I was like, you know, you're a real one for doing this because you're gonna have to, you know, you could have easily been like, hey man, that was that was <laughs> back then. But um, but sometimes like they just it just doesn't click for them yet. Like, okay, I could be charging a lot for it. And you have some that they know. <laughs> you know uh, they, 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 they're educated, they've been around for a minute, they talk to other influencers, they know what's up. And then some, the ones that are usually the most expensive are the ones that are assigned to like management companies and agencies because you have to keep in mind, they're usually overpriced because you are you also have to pay, the, you're basically paying the management company or the, or the agency fee on top of it. So See, like, I'm trying to find the ones that are on to come up because like once, like you said, once it clicks, <laughs> their, their prices are probably going to shift around, but since you already locked in with them, it's like they're not probably going, you know, they're not going to charge you a whole bunch because you already built that relationship. You already established that relationship. Yeah. So, and I think some of it is that, like, it's like influencer stock, right? Like, like there's been times where we've done influencer campaigns with certain creators because, not because, like, the, not because we thought they were just going to do, like, a particularly amazing job or get, like, these these particularly skyrocketing because we can like, yo, like, this is really has a really good uptrend going. Let's just do it just to build a relationship, just so that they can see open by email, you know, from here on out. And then now when they do, they are up. Like we, and they, now they go from, you know, being this influencer with 200,000 followers that, you know, really was kind of overcharging for whatever work was. I was like, whatever, you know, we see the vision, we follow with you, we'll pay. And then a year and a half from there, they got 60 million followers and wild shit and we can get in their DMs and we can get in their emails because of that. You know, that's been that's been extremely valuable. Like one thing I talk about is like the, the Instagram page at Rap. 
Like I can DM them right now that was going about me because like I've literally been talking to them since they had maybe like forty thousand followers on Instagram. You know, and like their history is there. Like I have YouTubers and Instagram pages that I don't know I have the same relationship because like I caught them at such an early stage and they just always, you know, fuck with you for respecting their business and paying them out the gate that they, they will work with you long term. I um, mean, I feel like that's like that's like the, the best position to be in. And that does take it's like it's really like like influencer stock. You know what I'm saying? Like like who do you see that like you like their results, they seem like they're really doing it at a high quality. They you feel like they're gonna stick it out long term and really maybe do it a thing that easy to work with. You know, like those are the main people to keep around. Wow, what's up? It's Brand Man Sean. And if you got value from this video, we got a ton of value to offer you in brandmannetwork.com. It's completely free. The link is in the description. If you want to talk with us directly or some of the people in our community in between videos, so you can ask questions specific to you or hop on one of the live sessions that you see on the channel when we're speaking with other artists, brandmannetwork.com is the place to go hop into our app is really dope and you get access to free courses as well but it might not be free forever so hurry up and get in there before i change my mind